I'm from a family, I have a brother and two sisters. My mom taught piano. So there was always music in my house. I was the rebel of the family who did not want to take music lessons. Today, I don't read music very well, but I have an ear. The kite is an extension of me. I listen to music, even when I'm flying without music, I feel the kite, I feel the wind in the sail, working its way down to my hands. When my brother gave me a sport kite in 1982. I looked at him like, what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> and I started uh, learning how to fly and compete with the kite. Uh, competing with the kite is like flying and being a ice skater, interpreting music with the movement of the kite. And I ended up winning the individual ballet for the Nationals. It builds hand-eye coordination. Um, I found something that I didn't think I had. Uh, once I started flying it just made me feel good. I wanted to be better at it. It wasn't about trying to impress anybody. Um, all I wanted to do was just relieve my stress. And I found by flying that that worked for me. Um, after I started, after I started putting a set of headphones on, that opened up the new, whole new world to me because I started to just listening to the music and I said, oh wow, I could fly to this music. Not knowing that this is something that had been going on for a while. As, uh, as I kept competing, I was still working for Verizon. I found that I was getting chest pains constantly from my job. So I took an early retirement after 26 years working for them. I still was interested in kiting and I started to do a workshop with the daycare center and uh, we just made some kites and I talked a little bit about what I knew about kites at the time and I developed a program where I would go and just talk about kites to different people and showing different types of kites to them. And my second workshop was for uh, professional development for teachers at MIT. The difference, the difference between teaching daycare children and teachers, there's not much difference. There really isn't. Because both groups are eager to learn. Teachers, sometimes, and I'll probably get killed for saying this, they already know everything, so you, they have to relearn things, and you have to be a bit more patient with them. Children, on the other hand, are like sponges. Children will listen to you, and not, it's not just about kiting, but life itself. They will listen to you, and they will mimic what what we as adults say to them or do or tell them to do one thing and then we do another they'll remember that and and my MIT program I found that the teachers saw it as a a vacation and I like to 
I like to present my programs so that they're fun. I think that learning should be fun. With children, I call it stealth learning. Teachers become sponges also. And sometimes we get trapped in how we present things. If it worked one year, we're reluctant to change it to make it better. Is it the kite that's flying or is it me? Um, it's me and the kite. The kite and I are one. When I fly, particularly particularly I see indoors. When I'm flying indoors, I get into my music so much that there is emotion in me that is building and building and it translates to my kite. I try to make it translate to my kite and it seems that when I don't think about it I fly my best. I'm hearing my music and my music brings out my form. I've worked with a variety of children both economically advantaged, educationally advantaged, and disadvantaged. I work in a number of urban schools and in some areas some of these children don't expect to graduate from high school. Some don't even expect to live past high school. And I ask them, what college are you going to? I don't ask, are you going to college? In many schools that I work at, children don't expect to go to college. And when they hear that question, what college are you going to? They kind of step back. As if to say, oh, I can go to college too. I think it's important that when I go into schools, I say to them, you're going to fly a kite inside. And they look at me like I'm from another planet. <laughs> But after they make their project, and we talk about wind, we talk about where there's wind, where there isn't wind, why there isn't wind. I will fly for them. Normally I'll fly to a song called I Believe I Can Fly. But it's not about flying kites. After they've flown their own, they know that they can do that math project, that math homework that they kept saying, I can't do it. Or the younger kids who are learning to ride their bicycles are saying, it's too hard, I can't do it. And then when they do it, there's this sense of accomplishment, a sense of I can, and I encourage them to take those two words out of their vocabulary, I can't, and change it to, I can. I have a saying, if the wind is in your face, you're in the wrong place. That little saying means a lot to somebody who is trying to fly a kite, and it they think about it, it relieves some of their frustration of being unsuccessful in flying.